I'm just going to talk about the Alas Modular Bandage. This is something for use in moderate to severe wounds and it has a number of very useful features for controlling hemorrhage and getting wounds covered up and dressed in a very short space of time. The packet is easily opened. You find the notch at one end and remove the dressing. It comes wrapped in paper and that exposes the dressing itself. So I'm going to just demonstrate the application of the last modular bandage, not on a casualty, but uh, we'll presume that this subject has a wound to his forearm. And I'll talk through some of the features of the bandage as we go along. So first of all, you can see there's a plastic cup on the upper surface of the bandage. We apply the bandage over the wound with the cup aimed centrally over the wound itself. And with this hook and loop material on the end of the bandage, the first wrap around is enough to secure it in place, roughly in place, so that we can then think about application of pressure and not worry about having to hold the bandage in place. As I apply the bandage, one of the useful features of, of this dressing uh, will become apparent that throughout the dressing there are these thin strips of hook and loop material that will effectively act as a break should I inadvertently drop the bandage during application. We know in practice that if we drop a bandage and it rolls across the floor, it's very difficult to effectively reassemble it to apply it back onto the casualty. So having these little breaks makes life a bit easier as we're putting the bandage on. As I'm putting the bandage on, like any elastic bandage where I want to gain maximum pressure, because pressure is important for controlling bleeding, I'm pulling the bandage to the extent of its elasticity and then wrapping, then unraveling a few centimetres, pulling it to the end of its elasticity again and wrapping it so that very easily we're getting the maximum effect from the elastic nature of the material that we're using. At the end of the dressing there's a, another piece of hook and loop material and this will just adhere onto the bandage and keep it in place. If I want further security I can choose to use the plastic hooks that are on the end of the bandage material and I can simply hook them over a piece of the bandage itself and that will keep it very firmly adhered. Having done this, in a limb injury, I would usually elevate the limb. And of course, I do want to be careful and think about perfusion of blood beyond the wound, distal to the wound, because we can apply this very, very tightly. The important thing that we're trying to do is to stop the bleeding. And for that, we sometimes need as much pressure as we can possibly gain. But it doesn't mean we shouldn't be reassessing the casualty subsequently and making sure, for example, that the patient still has a radial pulse and that we haven't put the bandage on as tight as an arterial tourniquet. One of the other useful features about the dressing is the, the plastic cup, which as well as applying pressure right into the base of the wound, allows me to add pressure subsequently if the patient starts to re-bleed. But also, it means if I hand the patient over to another healthcare provider, they know exactly where the wound is without having to try and second guess by the application of my bandage. Some trauma dressings are made up of a pad of effectively cotton wool sewn onto a backing. One of the reasons we like the Elias Modular Bandage is that instead of this, the actual material that goes onto the wound is effectively a container, open-ended, at one end, and inside pad is sterile gauze, approximately three meters in length. And this can be used with someone with a penetrating wound or a cavity wound, where we need to get hemorrhage control by packing the wound. So effectively, you hold the dressing like this, grab hold of one end of the gauze and pack it into the wound, pulling it out of the pad as you go to fill up the cavity. Once the cavity is full, you can then apply the same or a different dressing over the top to gain compression to the wound itself. So this is just a, another useful feature of this particular device. Also within the pad itself is a small piece of polythene type material. And some will ask the question, what is this for? This was originally put into the Elias Modular Bandage as something that could be used to improvise a three-sided dressing 
for use on penetrating chest trauma, although this has largely been superseded by pieces of equipment designed specifically for purpose, such as the Russell chest seal.